to where you're zooming in from today because I always love to know that. I'm in New Westminster in um, very close to Vancouver. We have Calgary, Corona, Langley, lovely. From Vancouver, and I recognize some faces. It's lovely for those who have video on. Thank you. I'm just glad that people who don't as well. Totally fine. That's great. So, like I said, I'm based in New Westminster. Um, I'm originally from the UK and I moved to Canada about five and a half years ago. And um, I started my, I've been in the fashion industry for like 20 years and I started my natural dyeing yarn uh, business last year. And I'm called Wild West Dye because, you know, it's wild, because it's natural dyes. It's West because I live on the West Coast, even though sometimes I think I live on the East Coast. And Wild West is a bit of a play on the fact that I really love cowboy boots and cowboy style. And um, I've got a great collection of about 14 pairs of cowboy boots that I love to wear. It's a little bit cold at the moment. I'm wearing my snow boots at the moment. But I love it when I can get my cowboy boots on. And um, I love knitting to match my cowboy boots as well. So the colours and everything. And then the colour work top that I've got on today, which I hope you can see, and maybe some of you have seen before, it's actually got cacti on it. So this top matches all my cowboy boots, which is really quite um, exciting. So that's where sort of Wild West Dye uh, name came from. And the reason why I use natural dyes is not only because, you know, they're sustainable, and all that sort of the renewable side of it. But I truly love the color that you get from natural dyes. And when I look at the colors that you achieve on yards, and it has yellow, of course, there's some yellow way. Um, it just, it, it, for me, it, there's so much richness, richness and depth of color. And there's something very special about natural dyes. It's, a lot of them go together so beautifully. So I really, really love to share the beautiful colors that you get from natural dyes. Um, a little bit more about myself, like I said, based in Vancouver and, you know, knitting's been my whole life, really. And I started a meetup group about four, maybe, probably maybe five years ago now. So I love spending time with knitters. This is one of the reasons why I love sort of the Zoom style uh, virtual shows, because we get to chat. So I definitely encourage you to, like, ask me questions on chat or you can, like, you know, Ask me a question um, with your voice as well. I take your microphone off. Uh, it's just a really fun way to connect. So I run the um, meetup all online now, of course, which has been really fantastic because we have people from all over Canada and we have people from the States as well. So it's a really nice uh, get together that we do twice a week. So if any of you need, um, if you haven't got a meetup for your knitting group, then you ever need to come and spend some time with some knitters and chat along if there's not a virtual show happening, you're always more than welcome to come. And um, they run for like a couple of hours. And I always say to people, yes, we've got Nancy. Oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> uh, you know, if you only can come for an hour, like that's totally okay as well. Like it's not like and all levels welcome you know whether you're knitting like dishcloths or the very fanciest lace like this there's, it doesn't really matter we're just there to knit and uh enable and encourage you to cast on more apparently i'm uh there was peer pressure <laughs> within the group because i was encouraging everyone to cast on for new year's eve so you know you may turn into a multiple project knitter if you spend uh time with me i love having lots of projects on the go um <laughs> So I love, you know, spending time with knitters and talking about projects. Uh, the Beth was just asking when the meetups are. So they run every Saturday morning um, from like 10.30 to 12.30 Pacific time. And then one evening a week. The next few weeks, it's going to be sort of different evenings because I do actually teach as well. So I teach with a local yarn store called Bad Amers. And Bad Amers is going to be live on our screens on four o'clock next Sunday and so I've been teaching for quite a few years and the last sort of year with Bad Amers now and again that's all on Zoom. 
so that's something that I really love doing. I teach beginners. I do um, beyond classes I really love. And they're all project bases. So whether it's like cables or colour work. I've got a really lovely, I think they're all lovely. I think all knitting's lovely. So I'll just say that so many times. I've got a lovely colour work class and I really love to encourage colour work and I'll talk a bit more about <laughs> um, that. But if you've never done colour work and you fancy trying it, you know, it's really not that, it's really not that difficult. Um, obviously everything is easier when you know how and if you don't know how it can be daunting. But colour work's just so much fun and obviously we have some nice yellow in there because if you've met me before, do talk about yellow a lot, it's totally my favourite colour. Um, I also love all colours as well. So there's a colour work class coming up and lots of other classes. So if you fancy learning some new skills, the New Year's always a, sometimes we have like new skills on our, on our tick list. I've got a nice collection there that's uh, coming up over the next few months. So it's something that I love to do a lot. So talking about, well, actually, next I'm going to talk about my yarn bases. And then I'll go into talking about like the system that I sell. I'm just going to grab some water. So I have um, fingering, um, DK and worsted. They're like my three main bases that I have in the colorways. I've got some other yarns that I have in kits that I'll talk about a bit later. And it's all uh, pure merino. It's Canadian sourced. It's Canadian spun. So sourced in Canada. And the merino is all from New Zealand and it's ethically sourced merino, muesling is not performed and the owner of the mill personally visits the, well, maybe not so much at the moment, but when they vet them, um, personally visits the farms to make sure the sheep are really well looked after. And obviously well looked after sheep, you know, you get very, you get better wool as well. So it's really important. Um, all my yarn I get on cones, so I order all in cones. And what I do, I'm like, where's my things like scattered all around? <laughs> I'll make, uh, I skein up big 300 gram skeins. So I do dye lots either like 300 grams at a time or 600 grams at a time. So I'll make up these big skeins. They get washed, of course, first. They then go because uh, for the natural dyeing, you have to put it through a mordant process. Uh, for those of you that don't know, mordant means to bite in French, and your yarn must be mordanted um, before you put it in the natural dye pot to make sure the colours adhere correctly and they achieve good light and colour fastness and wash fastness as well. So, you know, whether a skein's being washed or mordanted, it looks exactly the same with the mordant that I use. So I have these big skeins. They're all prepped and ready to go. And then I'm just going to put that down, grab another one here, and then it will go through the um, dyeing process. And either, you know, some of them, I have like a two-step dyeing process, some of them three, some of them I put lots of different ingredients. I can do it a bit like cooking, sometimes natural dyeing. I prefer natural dyeing to cooking, I think. I put them all in the pot. Um, how big are your dye pots? My dye pots are 31. So 31 quarts, which I don't know if that, and so basically they're like, I'm gonna do it like, it's like this, like this bit. And they're about 12, I think they're 15, 16 inches. No, they're more than that. They're about 20 inches high. And they're 15 inches in, in radius. Radius, yeah. So all diameter. <laughs> um, so they're big die pots. And um and I've had a question from Pam to describe your yarn palettes. When you mean yarn palettes, Pam, do you mean like the colours or? Yeah, okay. So I try and do, because I love colour, I'm like, I love colour work. Um, so say in my fingering collection, I have, I think now it's 10, 15, it's like 20, 23 colours. And it goes from a very soft cream, all the way through and I have like creams and yellows. I've got a nice one. I'm going to start off with my yellows because like they're the best. They're not the best, they're just lovely. So I've got these are sort of five of the tones in the cream, yellows and caramels. This is a striped sweater that I recently um, finished a few weeks ago or months ago or something. 
And then I've got a lovely, um, go into all the purples and pinks. I'm just gonna grab my fingering yarn. It's here. Oh, hit my little box. Oh, good grief. Cables. I love to show this one because I know uh, sometimes people think with natural dyes, they might just be like beiges and creams and browns and there's nothing wrong. And those colors are beautiful too. Um, but you can also get like, a, I'm gonna make sure I get the camera, like amazing bright colors with natural dyes. And that's something that I really want to sort of share with the world. So you know, you know, you don't have to use synthetic dyes to get bright colors. Um, all the colours are possible. So this is this is with cochineal, this, and this one's called Showgirl. All my fingering collection is named after my love of dancing. So it's really nice to have themes. It makes it much more fun to call your colour names after themes. And my fingering is all about my love of dancing. And this one's Rockstar, which is on Eastern Brazil wood, which is another sort of vibrant one. And then, you know, I have softer colours as well because obviously it's nice, to, you know, it's good to have like your lights and darks and your different tones. And this is Baby Valentine, which is, it's actually a pole dancing move, which I can't, don't, I'm not able to do yet. Um, and it's like a really sort of grown up dusky pink, I like to call it, like a grown up pastel. And then I'm gonna go, and this is one of my new greys as well. So I'm gonna talk a bit more about greys um, later, but I do love, like cream's my favorite neutral, but it's not very easy to wear. Like I can't do anything while I'm wearing cream. <laughs> so gray is like my next favorite neutral. So this is a new uh, gray that I've got in and this is called Still Better. So, and then, you know, I've got all the blues. So one of the, you know, indigo, there's a woad as well, which is a very similar uh, friend of indigo. It's basically, you know, indigo is really is the only sort of blue that you can get with natural dyes and indigo dyeing is is just so much fun it's very magical i must do some actual videos of when you pull it out the vat and uh, hopefully you may have seen some you know there's been some live shows where people have been doing some live indigo dyeing and it's just so much it it just feels so magical because you have a special uh dye pot you have to take the you sort of take the oxygen out of the water essentially and when you put the yarn in and when you put the yarn in first you can, under the water it looks like this sort of neon lime green it's like crazy and then when you pull it out it's like lime green to start with and then as it oxidizes it with the air it turns blue so it's a great fun obviously you know indigo is indigo i think we all know what indigo looks like with our denim jeans and then I, all my greens are created with layers of indigo. So this one is dyed with uh, pomegranate first. I love using pomegranate. It's a very warm cream color. It's the rind of the skin. Um, it's also really great because it's, um, it's like a super, makes everything even more color and light fast um, and wash fast as well. So it's like a, a bit of a super warm. Thank you. Um, and then this is another green here. So depending what yellow you mix with your indigo, obviously then you get different greens. So it's really fun. Um, like the natural dyes are colors by themselves. It's so beautiful. That's what I think obviously. And then you mix the colors together and you get often more palettes. Um, and it's just endless kind of, endless fun. And then like this one here, this was also an indigo dye. Um, first as well so it's quite fun you can get quite a lot of variation I, I think you can see this here so I apply the I put the skein in the indigo bath in different ways like sometimes it's agitated sometimes it's twisted I've just seen a question um so you can get lots of different applications of indigo which is interesting because it's a big vat you're like well you can still get so much variation even though um, you're immersing it into a into a pot still. So Vicky was just asking about uh, the green, and I'm just need to check: was it this green, Vicky, or was it the other, or the sagey green? I'm just going to wait for Vicky to answer. I think it was this one, yeah. This one's Dragon Tail. 
I think this is one that I've uh, mentioned to you before. So this is in the fingering uh, weight collection. And in DK, it's called Florist. So um, it's available on both weights. So I do have different names for my different weights. because It just makes it easier with like how the website system works and the color pictures and everything. Um, but they're very similar recipes on both of them there. Okay. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about, for those of you who don't know, about my sort of cake quarter system. Um, so I sell all my three bases um, in 25 gram increments. So you can buy basically what you need to make your colour work. I'm just, I'll get to that in a minute, um, Kathy. Oh, sorry. I'll just explain about cake quarters and I'll get to your question, okay? So, um, yeah, because I love colour work so much, I love doing all these yokes, I just love having even just simple things as well, like it doesn't have to be fancy patterns, even things like the stripes. Uh, this is like one of the scarves that I've got. I can get my blue one out, actually. Ooh. And when I was younger and knitting, um, and I like grew up in the UK, and I grew up very much with Rowan designs, and I love Rowan, and I swear Rowan made me addicted to colour work. And I used to look in their beautiful magazines, which were just to die for, and see the designs, and then look at all the yarn quantity that you needed. And literally, it was just like so many balls of yarn to make these beautiful colour work projects. And I'd like cost it up, and I'm just like, oh, it's so much money. And knowing then also that you're only using small amounts of each ball of yarn, I used to find it a bit painful um, to do it. And sometimes I would, and sometimes I'd treat myself. And I made this like 50, 50 pounds, like a hundred dollar bag with all these millions of colors in just because I wanted to do it so much. So because I want to um, encourage the use of multicolors in however way you want to knit with them, I sell my yarn in 25 gram quantities, so you can literally just buy what you need. Hi Fanny, yeah, Wode is used still. People, a lot of people use Wode, I just prefer Indigo. Um, and, but what you don't get, if you, if you order 100 grams of yarn, and for our, any um, Americans, that's like three and a half ounces, you don't get four balls of yarn, because that would be like more ends to sew in, and. I don't know about you, but sewing ends isn't like the most joyous part of knitting. Um, so I, with the big 300 gram schemes, I basically wind off the quantity that you've ordered. So if you've ordered 150 grams, then you get, this is, a, I think this is about 150 grams here. You just get, you get 150 gram cake of yarn. You don't get 625 grams. And then you can make up your color work kits and it ends up being a lot more, um, it's better, you know, instead of having to buy five 100 grams, you can buy a 25 of this and a 50 of this and make all your colour work. So that's what Cake Quarters um, is all about. And then I'll go for water. And then in my single blend, so um, what I do have in my single blend is I have them in kits and there are different colour palettes. Some of them cross over. And they're not special orders. Everything that's on my website is all, is all dyed. So it's ready to ship. One of the things with natural dye, it actually takes from when I start the process, it takes four weeks for it to be ready to ship. So I don't want to have a dye to order system where you would have to wait that long and then wait for shipping, however long shipping might take. So everything's dyed to order, it's all ready to ship. And with the singles, I have, um, I was just reading your question again. So one of the, the, the fingering singles, I have a kit for the Whispering Shaw shawl. So I have a shawl kit because I do love, I do design kits as well. So, you know, you can choose your own pattern that you want to make. And then if you're not sure and you want a kit, you can order a kit from me. So this is a nice, um, it's got like a lace work edging. Uh, so you've got a little bit of fancy and then you've got a nice bit of stocking stitch as well. So, you know, I, I, I like fancy knitwork, but I actually really like doing quite simple knitwork as well. So you've got a little bit of both. And these come in in sort of unique colours. 
and I play a little bit, bit with the um, singles as well. So in my sort of iron fun that I've been having, this one here, these are like really interesting colors and I wish people could see, because this is a very sort of gold color that I've got on the singles. And this was dyeing with weld, which is a yellow. So it comes out like a, you know, a proper sort of nice yellow, uh, like, a, like a primrose yellow. And then when it's dyed in iron, it went this sort of very interesting bronze uh, color. So this is just like a unique one of a kind. So I'll play with my singles and the special yarns and just do different things. And maybe they're one offs or maybe if I really like them, I'll repeat them or, you know, all that sort of thing. So it's a nice opportunity to play as well as having your sort of base, base colors. And then this is another, and again, you know, this, this was a lac, which is a purple. Thank yeah, thanks Lois. Um, and so it starts off purple and then it went in the iron bath, which sort of take it this it's a sort of bronze, a very bronzy colour, and it's a very sort of interesting. And the iron's really fascinating. And I did actually want to talk a bit about iron with you because that's what I've been doing. Um, I've been making up, you know, playing with iron and making braids. So I'm gonna talk about, about that. I'm just gonna move some of my start getting like piles of things on your lap. Uh, <laughs> so iron's really interesting. Um, I have to have special iron dyeing days because iron reacts very quickly. And can, can you name the colors so we know what to order? Sure, was this one's on? Yeah, you're right, Vicky, thank you. This one says, if it was the singles and let me know, this one was ARA, so it's A-R-A. Um, my singles are named after like planets and stars because I love planets. And I love planet gazing really. And this and the, the the sort of bronze one. It's very hard to explain sometimes colors. This is Cent Centaurus. So these are the two. Those yarn colors are surreal, but real. Thank you, Fanny. <laughs> um. So yeah, I have I have special iron dyeing days, and I had a challenge from someone to 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 build up on my grey collection. I had one grey called Smock C in my fingering, which is this really lovely charcoal grey. Um, and I wanted to get some light rays in there, you know, light and dark grey and making sure you have those sort of different um, saturations and tones is really important. So when I'm sort of ex experimenting with colours and new recipes, I always make up these little like 10 gram, here we go, 10 gram schemes. And I tried lots of different ways. I'm gonna just show you the oh God, camera. Lots of different tones for the grains. Um, one of the interesting thing is if you if you alum the yarn first, you have to um, there has to be a tannin on the yarn for the iron to react with it. So I do the mordant with the alum, I put the tannin on, and then it goes into an iron bath. And if you do the alum first, you get a much lighter grain because iron itself is also a mordant. So then what you can do is you, you know, prepare the yarn, you then put the tan on, tannin on it, and then it goes in an iron. So it's like an after mordant with the iron only, and that gives you a much darker grain. So I found, you know, doing all the experiments and seeing all the different tones that you can get and playing, alum is the mordant. Um, that I use to ensure that the dye, the natural dyes adhere to the uh, yarn properly. Um, what was I saying with these? And the fun, the really fun thing, and I want to do some videos on this, is when you haven't, when you're doing the iron, the more than after, the color changes so quickly. You just put, you put it in the bath and you just see it immediately change. And it's really fascinating. And you can play with the, the darkness of the gray that you get and how long it actually spends in the iron dye bath. For some of the, um, another one of the, the singles that I've, so this is the bulky singles. Um, and they, these are two new colors that I've done here. So I'm gonna get, make sure I get the names. This is Astrons. So we've got a really interesting like gold silver colorway. And I achieved this by, it's called dry twisting. So you have your skein, which is dry. You twist it and then you lay it in the dye bath. 
and then the dye, as the dye and the, uh, the liquid absorbs into the yarn or the fiber, obviously in this case it's yarn, you'll get a, quite a big variation from the yarn that hits the water first to the yarn that hits the water last. And then with this yarn, it's a bulky singles, it's 80% merino, it's 10% cashmere, and it's 10% nylon, it's crazy soft. And it actually took five hours for the yarn to fully absorb into the dye bath, which I thought was insane. I kept like checking, I was like, oh, no, still not yet, okay, fine. And the, the variation that I got throughout the scheme was, was really strong. So when it went into the dye bath, the very the darker areas went just bronze gold and the lighter areas went silver. And, and I think it's really sort of quite magical to get a gold silver colorway like this uh, with natural dye or maybe with any dye. And then this one here, so, and then, you know, the amount of time it's in the iron bath. So this was in the iron bath a little bit longer and it went much darker. So this is the pewter um, and this is called nebulae. And now these single bulkies I sell as a kit. Um, so there's a lovely hat pattern, like a hat kit. Uh, this is one of the other colorways called Aquarius which is the indigo, as you can see, you can probably guess, it's the indigo dyeing. And this was one of like the very sort of high twist techniques of like highly twist the yarn, put it in the dye bath and don't touch it. And I get this really interesting splatter. So uh, Julia was asking if the iron has a detrimental effect on the yarn. So what I use, I use 2% iron, the, the guideline is two to 4%. So I always use the lower end. And what I do is only in there for a maximum of 20 minutes and sometimes only 10 minutes because it doesn't need that long. And it always gets washed straight away afterwards. And because of that, uh, it doesn't have a detrimental effect. If you, it's not recommended to use more than 4% anyway to, because uh, then you wouldn't want to dispose, it wouldn't be safe to dispose down the, down the drain. And if you left, say you left something in an iron bath overnight, it would, would start to deteriorate because I leave it in for a maximum of 20 minutes and then wash it in a pH neutral soap afterwards. The yarn is still very, very soft and it, it doesn't get damaged at all. So yeah, it's a good question because it, it can do for sure if you don't um, use the correct process and look after it. So like I said, I was asking the, the singles bulky, We've got, I've got the Missy hat and I've also got a cow. Cause, and these are like lovely, simple patterns. Sort of my design uh, style, I think I'm trying to think of the right word, is having kits that really anyone can do. You know, there's a lot of just like, you can do so many beautiful things in knits and pearls and all the interesting textures. This one here is a um, mistake rib. It's called, the stitch pattern's called, and um, it's really fun. It makes a really nice puffy uh, texture, and this is a very puffy yarn. It's got like puffy texture, puffy yarn. It's like double puff. Love it. Uh, <laughs> so like these are ones that are really fun um, to do, and I'll just quickly show you some of the other colors that I've got. I've done this lovely sort of like ice blue. Uh, when you want to get a really light blue with indigo, you don't want to put it in the bath for a short amount of time because then the indigo won't adhere correctly to the yarn and it will, I mean, indigo always comes off in your hands a little bit, you know, you seem to be getting deep. But to get this light blue, I, it's the very last thing I dye and I keep exhausting the dye bath. And I normally have some like extra skins on, on hand. That I can just like put some blue on because I can use it for another color until I can get this really lovely light blue. So this stays in the dye bath just as long as the other colors into the vat, but it has a much, uh, the indigo is much weaker because I've used a lot of it up already. And then I can get this sort of ice blue color. That feels fun. And um, this is a Riga which is a lovely, this is indigo first and then it's dyed with lac. I really like, you can have, I use lac a lot. It's a great uh, vibrant color. You can get lots of different colors from it as well. 
and um, because I do this twist dye indigo technique, you know, you've got a lot of variation in there, um, which is which is beautiful, which I think is beautiful. I love semi, you know, semi solids and tonals. You can do you can do anything with anything, you know, whatever you want. But with semi solids and tonals, so it was that on the purple, Julia. The purple is called Auriga. There's only one purple in this yarn, so it really does stand out. If it Oh, sorry, that's good direct message. Um, <laughs> there we go. I've typed it in there. It, it does stand out. Uh, but yeah. And then this one is Pegasus. And this is with the indigo. And then it has something called Eastern Brazil word that's been shifted with a pH level to get this sort of blush color on top of it. So I've got, I think, sort of seven colours in the single full king. Um, and they were, uh, besides the two greys, they were like all dyed with indigo first. Um, and then over dyed with different colours. So that's always fun. Okay, that's that one. I'm just like quickly looking at my nose. <laughs> Damn. Uh, one of my other kits um, that I uh, released sort of a late last year, um, Indigo, because it's beautiful. Again, I've got this lovely ice blue, and this is the Caboose Way cow. Again, it's all knits and pearls and uh, textures, so anyone can knit this. So we've got like, it's, it's like a fake seed stitch in the ice blue. Um, and hopefully you can see the textures. You can see the textures of this one here. And it's reversible as well. Not all my designs are reversible, so it's not always um, possible. But whichever way you wear this, it looks great with the textures on both both sides. So uh, I have a three color, three indigo kit. And I like, you know, having different textures and a different color, it sort of keeps you interesting as interested as you're knitting. Um, I find as well, because I always want to, I'm looking forward to getting to the next color. And then when I get to the next color, I've got a different texture to work as well. So I've got the, I released the indigo color, um, at the end of last year and then I've got a little swatch it's in my lap and then for I've done Vancouver Love which is a three color grays uh, which has just been released this week so because I make these big um, schemes I can knit up little swatches like I just skein a little bit extra onto my 300 grams that I'm winding off because I want to knit up some samples um, and then Here's the three, here's the three colors here. And it's nice So this one had the Mord the Alum Morden applied first so I could get the light gray. Um, the medium, oh, I'm like confused by video mirroring. The medium gray didn't have, uh, was just an iron afterwards. So these have the same amount of the dye stuff, of the tannin. But one was uh, mordanted first with alum and one wasn't. And then that just gives you the two different tones. And then this has an even stronger uh, tannin dye applied. So it goes a darker gray. So then I have those three sort of grays there. And then this is the sort of Vancouver love. We're full of gray uh, <laughs> in Vancouver in these months. But it is a, a very beautiful color. So I have that kit um, available there. Um, let's see, we've got 10 minutes. I'm just going to this. Any, sort of any, any questions, of course, ask in the chat. If there's any colors you specifically want to see, um, feel free to ask. Oh yeah, 20, I'm thinking, thank you, um, Eureka. I was thinking six o'clock, because it's normally on the hour, right? Okay, great. <laughs> That's my brain. Um, I'm just going to bring up, oh, there we go, all my boxes around me. Oh, I'll show you the sock here, and then I'm going to show you some of the sweaters that I've been knitting. Moontail. Oh, that's in my worsted. Yeah, I'll grab that for you, uh, Vicky. Oh, I've got my worsted just here. <sighs> So Moontail is um, very similar to the Pegasus that's in the Singles Bulky. So it's indigo dyed first. 
and then it has eastern Brazil words with the pH level shifted to get this blush colour. So it's a really quite sort of interesting um, colour on the moon tail there. So that's my moon tail one. <laughs> Thank you. I have a little, a little um, let me just check in my box. Yeah. I did like a bit of a crazy striped hat, but um, <laughs> but there's some of it knitted up as well, Vicky. So it just gives you a really nice sort of like semi-solid um, colour there as well. And you don't, so far you don't really get, because I dye in these big schemes and do twisting, you don't particularly get cooling or anything. Um, it just gets this lovely sort of variation of depth and colour on the, on the yarn, which is nice. Which, and I'm like socks. I'm gonna show you the other ones that I've that's come out this week. I like to do um what is that orange colour? Just had a message from Fanny. Is that on the worsted weight, Fanny? Or the one that I just showed? The one that I just showed? That was moon tail. So that's available on worsted. And then on the singles bulky, it's um, Pegasus, if you want to get a, a bulky one. Banana split. I love banana split. <laughs> banana split is pomegranate um, as well. And I've actually, that was, I used banana split in my sweater. So it's this first color here. So it's a really nice warm cream. Um, and then I've got the, like the caramel lift here, and then this is the blusher armor. So like even just like these three colors together, um, it's really warm. And then oh, the orange color on the hat was is a uh, orange fanny as well. Yeah, that's like a really lovely. There's some zing. Here we go. In the orange. <laughs> Oranges and yellows. Have to have great oranges and yellow. Um, <laughs> but I do, I'm someone who gets very cold feet. So I like to have nice worsted socks. And uh, so this is like my cozy belly sock. See, it had a stitch marker inside it somehow. Um, <laughs> so this is a berries and cream colorway. This is lac. Um, and again, these are all uh, twist dyed, so dry twist dyeing. So you get this really great uh, variation in depth and tone. So I've got five colours um, in this one, and this is with the, the rock star, which is um, Eastern Brazil wood again, which as you can imagine is a wood. And then I've got this is this is lac. So these are both lac. But this one's like lack in its natural state. You know, I just put it in the dye pot as it is. You know, I don't do anything, anything. I don't add anything extra. And then this one is when I add cream of tartar, which is a shifter. So this is where you can like shift these colors and get different colors out of natural dyes by putting different things in the dye pot. And shifters can be cream of tartar. They can be the pH level. They can be chalk. Um, even adding things like I put copper pennies in the, that's not really a shifter, it's more of an enhancer, but playing with shifters and taking that sort of one base ingredient and seeing all the different ranges of colours you can get with it, it's, it, I find that a lot of fun. So Prairie Canyon, I've got Prairie Canyon on today as well. This Prairie Canyon is also pomegranate. <laughs> so. This is what I used um, for the main color of my sweater. And again, this is the dry twist dyeing. So you get this sort of lovely variation. I hope you can see it. I'm like, how can you see it again? Okay. Yeah. So that's Prairie Canyon. Um, and then, yeah, but Banana Split is the pomegranate on the fingering. And pra Prairie Canyon is the pomegranate on the DK. Uh, so you obviously like that sort of warm, that warm colour, which is uh, and I like um, pomegranate's really nice to add to marigolds. So say on the orange that I was showing, 
just a moment ago. That's with marigold, and marigold's just beautiful. The orange that I've got on here has the marigold in it. It's a really lovely gold orange. And um, but it's not as light and color fast as some of the natural dyes. But when you add pomegranate to it, it increases its light and color fastness. So it's good to like pomegranate's that nice um, addition to sort of get some some better stuff there. And so I always add that whenever I use marigold um, in the dye pot, just to make sure. And the sort of warmth that you get added from it, I think, is like really, really great. That's that one. Oh, I'm going to show you some of the things I've been knitting. Where's the thing? <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen them, so this is obviously my Cactus Collar Work sweater. This is a really fun knit. This is how where you know Collar Work is for everyone, maybe not in these colours, you know, whatever takes fancy, but this is where you're only like, you're only working one colour at a time. <laughs> right, Nicole? <laughs> and so, you know, if you can knit and purl, you can make this top, you know, just because it's got lots of colours in, you, because you only knit with one colour, uh, it's totally doable by everyone. So I always try, you know, sometimes I like to do a bit of fancy, but I always try and choose the, the projects that I make in, in the mind that, that anyone can do it. So loud and sunny. Yes. And you. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. It makes me happy when I wear this one. Yeah. Um, I was just on this total 70s vibe for like a couple of months and I saw this design. I'm like, oh, this is the one with like the, the brown, the yellow, the orange. <laughs> This is a striped sweater and it's by a designer called Nistosophy. And it's available in fingering and DK. It's just in like a, a pattern for both, which I thought was really cool. Um, this is another one. I think oh, this is the second one I ever made. This is like the Retro Rings T. So the name of the pattern was the Deep V. I've actually just bring up a link for you because I've got it, that one on here. Just pop that in so you can have a look. Which looks into everyone. So it's the VBAC T. That's a link to like my project page on my website, and then it's got links to the Ravelry and the designer's website as well to purchase the uh, if you want the pattern from either site. And yeah, it's great. And the, you know, she's even like you can buy it five colors. You can do it two colors. I've bought people. People have bought it and they just got three colours. And these are the sort of designs that, you know, say one colour you need 50 grams or 75 grams and another colour you need 75 grams. So you can actually just buy the 75 grams that you need. You know, you don't have to buy every colour in 100 grams. And that's kind of why I choose my designs around um, as well, is multicoloured knitting that maybe you don't need 100 grams of yarn to like add that second colour in. Uh, and you can do it. This is actually one of the first tops I did. I'm always doing like short sleeve tops. I think maybe I, uh, they're quicker to knit. I think that's why, even though I'm knitting all the time anyway. And uh, this is the Velo Crop by Andrea Mary. And again, this is like, you're only knitting one color at a time. Um, this is obviously a bit of a yellow theme. I do have to knit things in other colors as well. Uh, the design actually for this is a three color, so she actually has like a, a stripe of uh, a third color in there as well. And it's really textured and puffy. Some people think it's brioche when they're sort of seeing it, but it's a garter stitch stripe with just like a twisted stitch. Uh, it's like a mini cable, it's not really a cable, you just it's a twisted stitch, but it looks like a mini cable. Um, it's just a little fun tank. Like, Showing you the stripes top, and then this is the retro rings, which is a really fun. Everything's fun. I think knitting's always fun. What's the name? Which one was that, Lee? <laughs> that you were asking about? Was it this one? Yeah. Okay. Let me get that. I'm gonna uh, get that in the chat for you. Because I, I always misspell it if I'm not careful. This one. <laughs> And I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it properly, really. Belly crop. Um, and again, size inclusive. I always make sure that the, the designs that I use 
And so the tops are always size inclusive, so anyone can knit them. That's always really important too. I had something similar that I made 25 years ago and want to do it again. Awesome. What was what are your favourite colours there, Lee? What colours did you or what colours was it 25 years ago? <laughs> Which one was of that theme? Oh, it's so hard. 95, blue and teal, nice. Nice. I love that. Um and then would you want to make it in blue and teal again or different colours now? So I always like asking people what they're like favorite, talking about colour or something. And guys love to do that. Something new, lovely. <laughs> but if you need, and that's the other thing, you know, if you ever need help choosing colours or you want to see some colours together, um, what I do is I've got all the, uh, like, as if you have seen on my website, obviously you've got all the yarn colours, they're all in like nice little circle photographs, like, like we just did all the last two weeks. And then I can basically put the, the colours together and then just send you that on a, like a JPEG. So you can see all the three colours, all five colours or two colours um, next to each other. I'll also send you multiple options because that's fun. Uh, <laughs> who just wants to look, look at one option? So if you, you know, let me know, like, this is the, the colour that I really want in it. These are maybe some other colours that I like. And I'll put some different colour options together send them over to you and then you can take a look and see which ones you want the most and or if you want to see something else I'll do that I really enjoy doing that sort of you know just putting colors together so much fun and then if you are buying you know anything you buy if you're buying a sweater quantity I'll totally help you out with you know, no one else really sells tight quarters and then there's 25 grams so I'll help work out you know how many you need to buy for the quantities and I'll even put a custom kit page together for you so I'll make your own page, I'll put all the quantities in there, have the final price, and then you can just, you know, easily purchase that way so you're not having to sort of do it all, your, do it all yourself. It's trying to sort of give you that service that you would get if you went to a yarn store as well, you know. And not all of us can even get to yarn stores um, at the moment. So I totally love to do that, and I'm always more than happy to do that. Um, okay. And I always like seeing what people are making. <laughs> They're like, oh, what are you going to knit? What top is it? <laughs> but yeah, this is a retro rings tea. Again, you know, it's something there. Oh, yeah. I, you know, this is the, the retro rings. Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, I love helping like that. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, it's great. And to be fair, you know, like with Beth, we actually got on a Zoom call. You know, she wanted to see all the colours together. It was fun because I think it was six colours, Beth, right? And I was like trying to hold them all. And I was like, this. But if you ever just want to get on a Zoom call and go through the colours and see, and like you can just put them together, I'm totally open to doing that. You know, talk, I, I enjoy talking to people so much with, about all these things. It's, it's nice to, it's always nice to be talking. Um, retro rings tea. Again, this is sort of one of those classic, you know, you need such a small quantity of these five colours. So this is, you know, when you just need to get 25 grams, it's kind of great for. It's also nice, you know, you could do the designs on, obviously lots of people have made this on Ravelry and some people have used one colour for all five rings and that also looks really, really nice as well. Uh, I also think something like this is great for sash busting. So if you've got like a single skein of variegated sock yarn in your sash, that would be perfect for a design like this. And the other thing that I do as well, you know, if so using sash is also great. You know, if you've got something variegated in your stash, so putting a semi-solid with a variegated really looks fantastic. And I actually really think it pops that variegated so much more than knitted the variegating by itself. So if you've got some, you know, a single skein of yarn and you don't know what to do with it, you can take a photo, send it to me. You know, there's quite a lot of range of the semi-solids to choose from and we can like pair it together and you can make, you know, and then make something with it. Sometimes we just buy these single skeins and you're like, well, I can make a single skein scarf, which of course you can. But, you know, add some solid, semi-solid colours to it. You can suddenly have a lot more options for what you can make. So the Retro Rings Tea is a great one for this. And anyone who wants this bit, this is my non-finished top because I've got serious second sleeve syndrome. Um, <laughs> this one's a bit more spicy because it's brioche and I totally love brioche. But this is where I got, I had some really fab uh, sock yarn that I use for brioche. I love doing brioche with a variegated and a solid. It's, I just think it's just fab. Um, 
So I matched that with the showgirls, the bright pink uh, from my fingering collection with a sock yarn that I had in my stash and just made this really, I think it's a really fun top. But obviously I haven't finished making it yet. So I do need to, uh, I do need to do that. <laughs> but I'm, you know, more than happy, you know, send me some pictures and I'll, I'll put some stuff together um, for you for sure. I think that's, I think that's, that's all my sweaters. So yeah, I've made like five of them so far. And I've got some other things. Oh, oh. So really the sort of like, I'm just gonna pop, what is that brioche pattern? It's called Lizzie Sweater by Seuss Knits. And um, I'll just put it in here, Lizzie Sweater. Seuss Knits. I hope if you can use Ravelry, if you just Google Lizzie Sweater Ravelry, um, it will totally pop up. If you're having problems finding it, just get in touch with me on my like Instagram email. Um, and I'll get it to you because I haven't got the link ready to flash in actually. I'm just going to put my email in the chat. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, feel free. Totally. <laughs> um, I'm just going to get this link here, pop this in. There we go. So, you know, I have a range of kits that I've done. So if you don't know what to knit, you want to knit something. So I've got some hats. So I've got like in the DK yarn, I've got like this gathered hat. Again, you've got some, some just nice texture here. Just this knit pearl texture with the gathered band. And I've put my new color, Silver Sturge, which may be my favorite name. Um, I've put in this swoogie hat. Thanks, I'm glad you got it. And this is one of the twist art. I'm just going to show you the scheme. So I'll show you the scheme while I'm doing it. I think Silver Stud's a really fun name. <laughs> so like my DK and worse is sort of named after like Western theme. My little like cowboys. That's where I got Silver Stud from. So that's that one there. So I've got like, I've got hats. I've got like the DK hat or the Spoogie. And in the Worsted. I've got like this cowie hat, and then this has got the, like this lace pattern here. And this green is not coming out great on this camera by the looks of it. So, oh, and the bingo word. Thank you. Uh, I, I actually wrote it on my notes. Bingo, but you're yeah, reconsidered. She should make it. So, the bingo word is nature, which obviously <laughs> seems like a lovely word. I love the way Eureka is very thoughtful about the words that she chooses. <laughs> Jesus, Laura. Um, so that's a good one. So thanks, Helen, for asking me that. So like I said, there's a collection of knitting kits for you to choose from. If you want to like make your own kit with the Cape Quarter system, like totally get in touch. And uh, we can look at that. If you've got any sort of questions about natural dyeing, just generally uh, chat with me about it. Again, you know, I'd like to say you're all, always more than welcome to join me at my meetups. You know, they're not related to Wild West dye. As such, it's, it's not like a you have to bring Wild West Eye yarn to join them. It's a community-based uh, group that's free, and we always love to welcome new people. It's really, really nice from from all over, like I said. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, I'll just show you some of the other things here. Uh, some of the more DK kits. These are the designs that I actually teach my uh, beginners. I have beginners knit beginners um, classes every month, which is really nice. This is called like the rail track wrist warmer and cow. Oh, I'm flapping around. It's just a knit and pearl design. And this is also great for like Zoom meeting. Because a lot of us, you know, if we're meeting, even like knit, knitting meetings, sometimes I have to have really simple things going on sometimes, otherwise I'm doing so much like undoing. Um, so you know, I do like to have a lot of kits that are suitable for Zoom knitting as well, or if your brain's just really struggling to focus. Uh, I haven't done very much complicated knitting this last year, and I do find a lot of joy in just doing some simple knitting and, and relaxing with that. Vicky's just asking if I'm doing a workshop on short row techniques sometimes. It's definitely something I can look into uh, doing, yeah, for sure, because I've got my, like, April 
uh, classes to plan. So I can look at doing that. For the stock, like last year with the stock, uh, I did a free Zoom along with the uh, Cozy Betty stock. So I might well do that as well in February because that's quite fun to do knit alongs together and we can make a stock. And in that, I do the Japanese short row um, technique. I really love Japanese short rows. They're very clean. Um, to do, I find German short rows when you have to like wrap that yarn over and you get like the double stitch and it's a little bit, mm, you don't get that with Japanese short rows. It's easier to count stitches, I find. And it's just something when I try both, I, I prefer the Japanese short rows. So like definitely let me know if you fancy doing a sock to knit along and I can offer that with my cozy belly sock uh, kit like I did last year. Um, and that was, you know, it's just like three weeks, to, three evenings or maybe over the weekend. My evenings are getting busy with all the teaching, uh, but I'd quite like to do that because that's really fun to do. Because um, I've got the short row in my uh, cushion kit. Ooh. But yeah, short rows and kitchener, great techniques to learn for New Year. Because <laughs> in the cushion kit that I did, that's all short rows and kitchener. So it's just like, oh, learn some new techniques. Uh, but it's like, it's just. I wanted to have a kit that just showed off a lot of the colours so you could do a bit of a yarn taste, a colour tasting with it. Uh, but I definitely need, you know, to try some things out. I do have videos. I've got like um, any sort of techniques that are more than, I've got knit and purl on my, on my videos as well. But anything in my kits that aren't just knit and purl, I'll always put a video on YouTube, an instruction video um, to go with it. So if, you, if you're not sure how to do something, you can learn a new stitch. Uh, and in my videos, I'll just go like straight to the point. I'm like, hi, I'm Rebecca. This is what we're doing. <laughs> let's, let's go. Uh, sometimes with YouTube videos and you have to like keep skipping, you know, like wait for people. Yeah, I can't be bothered. So my instructional, instructional videos get straight to the point. So you can have a look at that there. I'd love you to, you know, connect with me. Obviously, I'm on Instagram, of course, at Wild West Dye, uh, Facebook, and uh, sign up for my newsletter. I love to, I sort of, started doing them weekly I'll let you know about the classes that I'm teaching virtual shows inspiration uh sort of color things you know things that are coming up new kits stuff that I'm working on so it's a lovely way to connect um with you and, and that's really what I, I love to do the most which is which is why I do the teaching oh you started your cupid scarf today Michelle oh it's oh, it arrived I feel like I didn't know it had arrived how exciting <laughs> it's always nice when I get emails and Parcels have arrived. <laughs> oh, and one last thing. So a couple of minutes. So my knit, I was with my knitters um, in my knit group earlier today, and they said that I have to uh, give you a sneak peek of my new kit that's coming out next week. And it's based on the Cupid scarf, um, but it's actually a shawl version. Um, so I'm doing what my knitters told me today. <laughs> So this is going to be, is this the right way around? Yeah, this is going to be the Cupid shawl. Um, and the Cupid's actually na named after a pole dancing move that I'm totally going to try and practice tomorrow. And I'm going to try and, it's a new one that I haven't learned yet. So then I can, with the release of the shawl, I'll show, off, show it off on the dancing maybe. So this is in the fingering way. Um, yarn, and I've got it in these amazing, you know, sunset colours, but I'm also going to have it in like the blues and greys that are in the uh, Cupid scarf as well. And it's things like that in the kits, like if you ever want to have a custom colourway, um, I can totally put them together as well, you know, it's just like, yeah, if that's the colours that you want, let's put them together. But this short it's going to be like, it's like 25, 50, 75, 100, so you get those specific amounts that you need to make the shawl and then you can make all the you know add all these colors in uh, so the message from fanny remind me i wanted to do the shawl in your striped scarf okay fanny, I, will. <laughs> I will definitely remind you get in type messages so this is sort of what's coming um next week and and again you know it's just these knits and pearls so if you can knit and pearl you can make these uh you can make these designs so yeah and then we're at time. So if there's any like final questions or something that you do want to ask, please uh, contact me. I put my email in there. Uh, always on. I, I don't mind direct messages on on Instagram. Also totally fine. 
Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed spending your evening with me. And I believe we have yoga. I think Yurika will let us know anyway. Do we have yoga on there uh, coming up? <laughs>